Alrighty, so MATLAB has this new thing. Well, okay, I say it's new because it's new to me. It's been around for a while. So we used to use Guide to make GUIs and it kept warning me that they were gonna get rid of it and I really liked it and learning new things was hard. Um, but since they're getting rid of it, I have to use App Designer now. And I tried it a couple times and at first that looked really kind of scary, but it's really not. <laughs> it's kind of, I'm kind of embarrassed that I thought it was scary. So um, anyway, you kind of open it up and it's got some stuff somewhere. There we go. Um, so I'm just going to start with a blank app and uh, we're just going to play. This is really, we're not going to do anything interesting. We're just going to get comfortable with how it's set up. So if you've used Guide before, it's pretty straightforward. If you haven't, then you don't know what you're not missing. And to be honest, Guide was kind of clunky. But you know, I, it was clunky, but I loved it anyway. So basically, you can just drag and drop stuff. So if you want to chart on your little um, appy thingy, whatever it's called. Why is this taking so long? And then buttons, and then check boxes. And you can just pull things over. So you can have stuff where people type in answers and I don't know, just stuff, image, images and axes and labels. Um, it's kind of cool. So uh, radio button groups, so if you don't remember what radio buttons are, so check boxes, like you can do the thing where you make lots of check boxes that are all like, you can check like multiple things at a time, but the button groups, you can only do one at a time. There's all these like really kind of cute little things like spinners that you can uppy downy on the numbers, um, just all kinds of stuff. So um, it kind of works. One of the nice things about it is uh, it works exactly the way you think it would. And it's, oh, this is so amazing. So um, the previous way that you could do this with MATLAB, it didn't have these like auto alignment thingies. Oh, that they're so wonderful. They're so wonderful. Anyway, you just double click it and you can change the name to Bumble Snort or whatever. And so what you can see, that was supposed to have a B in it, Bumble Snort. So if I double click it, um, it's now called Bumble Snort. Now something else happened that you may not have noticed. Over here on the right is this component browser, which right now looks terrifying because I added so many things. But notice there's an, it says app.bumblesnort checkbox. So it's super smart in that it knows that it's a checkbox, but it also knows that I called it Bumper Snort. So you can see there's checkbox three and there's checkbox. Can I move these around? Oh my goodness, I can sort them. I didn't know I could do that. Okay, I'm gonna put all my check boxes together. Put my spinner down here, cause she's crazy. All right, check box, I'm gonna call this one, oof, fly in my face. Um, and look, it's fly in my face, check box. And this is so amazing. So essentially at, the, at a programming level, the way this works is MATLAB has like a single variable, basically it's a structure, but for the, okay, we're just gonna simplify it. A single variable called app, and then everything in it is app dot checkbox, app dot button group, app dot blah blah blah, app dot blah blah blah. And so the whole thing is contained in like one brain, and um, you can access everything within that brain by saying app dot app dot blah blah blah. So like if I go here to button, and I'm gonna call the button puppy kisses. Puppy, ah, puppy kisses. We got a new puppy. It's amazing. Puppy kisses um, app dot puppy kisses button, and I love that it automatically changes the name to include the fact that it's a button. I I, I think I'm just like much too of an old school programmer because this is like gives me so much delight in my heart because I remember not having that amazing feature. Um, button groups. So if I was trying to decide, I might want an armadillo, or I might want a toucan. How do you spell toucan? Or I might want a I don't know. Okay, anyway, you've got all this going on, and um, you can click run at any time. And I've got to save it, so bubbles. Okay. Save and run, and there we go. It's a little slower, and I don't know if that's just because I've got my recorder running. But look, I can clicky things here, and I can clicky things here, and see how I can have like multiples going on at once. I can click this button, although nothing happens. I can type in here and see, I don't know, hi. Oh, well, you must be numeric. <laughs> Never mind, I can type three. <laughs> um, spinner, I can go uppy downy. I can probably type directly into it. Yeah, and then I can uppy downy from here. I think it can go negative. 
I don't think it can go. Oh, it can. And then it, oh, look at that. It's so smart. I love it. I love it. Okay. So, um, really, this is kind of cool. So, I, you notice I can't change anything except the things that are obviously that I can change, if that makes sense. Um, and so, basically, the user who's whatever you're doing with this can't mess things up. So, um, what you'll see is over here. So, if I click this, it says edit field. And over here on the right, it's something called edit field. So, like, let's pretend I was going to say how many hot pockets. So, if we were making a hot pocket ordering system or something, I don't know. So, then I'm going to take this, and you can think you can change how big some of these things are. Oh, yeah, look. Stirps. I can make it smaller, and I can make this come over here, and I can do all oh, whatever. Whatever you need to do. How many hot pockets? And now, look, it says how many hot pockets edit field. So basically we can change all of these things and kind of do whatever we want with them. Oh my goodness, I can just pick stuff to go in there and there's a cat. That is like the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me, like in general. Yay! Okay, so hold on, I want to see my kitty. Meow. Meow. Kitty, kitty, kitty. There she is. What a great kitty. Okay, so um, let's see, what can we do next? Um, oh, okay, so click on here. Bumble Snort. So Bumble Snort checkbox. Now if you look down here, there are all these properties that you can play with. Now the properties that we see on by default or whatever um, are probably going to be the ones we care about the most. Um, and they're organized by category. If you want to see all of them, you can. This is a little bit harder to see. Um, but if you're more comfortable with kind of the old school of doing that, then that would be good. So we can look at this. Um, where's I go? Go back to this one. Okay. So checkbox. Um, value. And these are amazingly intuitive because you can just click and you're like, oh, look, it's checkbox. Oh, look, it's checkbox. Um, I'm assuming word wrap does what you would think it does. So I could call it Dumble Snort Uber Head. Does it do anything? Oh, yeah. OK, so it word wraps just like you would think. Otherwise, it does that. Oh, this would be so useful because sometimes whenever you make, um, whatever you call it, um, make forms and you put them up, and then people resize their monitors or resize their windows. Oh, look, it auto did, did it. Okay. If you wrapped it, it might work better. I don't know. Anyway, some just something kind of fun today. Okay, and so if I click value and I turn the value on, now whenever I run it, it automatically has that as the value. So it doesn't need to word wrap. The word wrap only matters if I do it here. Oh, good to know. But look, it's fantastic. Okay, other things you can do, I'm going to go back to Bumble Snort. Um, other things you can do, you can change the font size. This is infinitely easier. I can't believe I resisted using App Designer for so long. Um, you know, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. And you could change the colors. Um, and you don't even have to know the color codes anymore. I'm like so incredibly. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I am so used to this being infinitely harder that I'm just like kind of like a kid in a candy store. Like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So you can turn these, make these invisible. You can disable them so that you can still see them, but the user can't unselect, deselect it. So see, it's disabled. So you could turn it visible, sorry, to off. And then whenever you run it like this, um, you won't even be able to see it. So basically what you could do is you could say program this button. So every time you click the button, the, you know, little checkboxy thing turned on and off where you could see it or not see it. So it's just, I mean, it's just stuff you can play with. Ooh, tool tips. So I could be like, this is a checkbox. Thank you, kitty. This is a checkbox. And then whenever you run it, you can be like, ba -doo. And then whenever you hover over it, it'll be like, this is a checkbox. I'm like, Thanks guys. Um, I don't know what this does. I'll have to play with it eventually. If you get super duper into um, stuff, you can change positions. You could like, so basically the idea is you don't have to go and like actually drag and drop. If you wanna be super hardcore, you can create these using code and locate it using code and all this kind of stuff. Um, it's got all this other kind of stuff on it that honestly, if this is doing it for the first time, if you want to change the tag on it, you could, but I would not. Just leave most of this alone unless you're like super awesome at everything else. Um, there's plenty to play with without messing all this kind of stuff up. So, do 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 do. All right, what else can we do? Oh, so like 
like how many hot pockets let's see what kind of options we have here so we can change the value oh we can change the limit so if we obviously can't have negative hot pockets so we can't have less than 10 hot pockets I mean and we can't have fractional hot pockets and you can control oh maybe we can but we can control the um, oh awesome we can control the number of what do you call it it's decimal points I'm gonna change it to a floating point variable with six decimal places because that's important whenever you're counting hot pockets to have that level of precision so see if I try to put in a number smaller than 10 I feel like I'm just discovering things like right now yay it must be between 10 and infinity oh this is so amazing I love this so much 12 point oh, 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 three hot pockets Oh, look at that. This is amazing. Okay, I think you have to close it though every time you change something. I haven't actually tried that. I don't think you can watch it while it's doing it. So if I change it to two decimal places, I don't think it automatically updates. No. So you'd have to close it and then open it back up to see the two decimal places. Okay, so just that's just like a little thing. As you're playing with it, make sure that you're close it in between. Again, you can change the font. Um, interactivity editable ooh you could make it to where you could actually change it okay so you could turn off the editability of it editability irritability you can turn off that see I can't enable it okay but it's what's the difference between editable and enabled that is an excellent question and it's so easy to find the answer I just play and see oh now see the whole thing is disabled instead of just the number uh, okay same thing all these things down here we really don't need to worry about um, the one for the axis so it's called UI axes I think that's just a holdover but UI stands for user interface if you don't like the name of it you can call it um, I don't know quadratic axes and now it's called quadratic axis forever and ever and you're like but the title didn't change that's right because I just changed the name of the object if I want to change it I can just come in here and double click it and I can call it yellow and now it's yellow so you can change all these things right in here and um, and it's fantastic I was playing with something else where I was messing with all these tick labels and tick marks it was like there is so much you can do because it's a plot um, and I'm not even gonna pretend to get into all of that right now um, let's see do we have just boring editable text yeah here's just editable text so it could be like um, kitty name so I'm gonna name this cat over here and the kitty name is going to be, come here girl, I don't know why I'm talking to my kitty name. My kitty's actually on the table behind me, but that's not my cat. Um, kitty name is bonkers. And so I can type a text in here, but I can't type bonkers in here because it has to be numeric. This is amazing. This is so wonderful because you don't have to worry about your user giving you stupid data. MATLAB's doing a lot of the dummy checks for you in advance. So this is just fantastic. Okay. Now we've looked at the, the, the snuggly happy side right here. Um, there is a scarier side, um, but it's also like where the really awesome stuff is. So here's the code view, okay? But what's crazy is MATLAB sets it up where I'm gonna be like, I don't like any of this, and I'm gonna try to delete it, but it won't let me. And I'm like, oh no, foiled again, if it wasn't for those meddlesome app designer people. Anyway, as you scroll down, there's nothing here that I can play with. It won't let me do anything because I'm in like little like happy learn how to do stuff view, which is the default thing. I didn't do this on purpose, it's just what happened. Now, the only way that I can change this is if I go here and I'm gonna right click the button, or I could really right click anything, but I'm gonna right click the button and I'm gonna go to callbacks and I'm gonna say add a pushed button function, pushed button, button pushed function callback. And look at this so now I could do anything I want to as long as it's in this little world get a message box hi okay so I made this really awesome function called message box hi I didn't even make the function so now every time I click this button it's gonna say hi isn't this great <laughs> okay but let's pretend instead I wanted to name the kitty okay so I want to put something over here so I'm just gonna show you this really briefly so you can see how to talk how these things all talk to each other so remember that this thing is called kitty name the kitty name edit field okay 
So if I look here, it says the label is kitty name and the value is blank, which makes sense because I don't see anything. And if I say bobble, now it says bobble. So I can take that out. Okay, so basically if I want to talk to this, I have to talk it, about it by calling it app.kittyName edit field. And I'm never going to remember that, so I'm just going to, can I copy and paste that? I can copy that at least. Um, kitty named edit field dot value, okay? Because that's the thing I want to change. So I'm going to go back to this puppy kisses. I can either go directly to the code view, or I can go back and right click it and say callbacks, go to this callback thingy. And I'll say, whenever I push the button, I want to change the app dot uh, what was it? I already forgot. I pasted it. Kitty name edit field. I think it was type, type, blah, blah, blah. start typing kitty name edit field. Derps. And then you're going to change the dot. And now here's a lot of the things that you can change. Change the value, the tag, the font name. I could just change the font name for no reason. But what was it? It wasn't the label. Oh, these are functions. I think I was just going to change the value, right? I already forgot. I already forgot. What is this called? Yeah, okay, it's called the value. I'm sorry, I have an actual kitty on my everything right now. So, okay, so I'm gonna go back to the code view. I'm gonna change the value to, um, I think we can just say pumpkin. Um, and I'm gonna do that. So if I go run, in theory, I'm gonna push this button and it's gonna call the kitty pumpkin. Oh my goodness, that was amazing. That was amazing. Um, but you can do anything you want here. So you could change um, the font size. You know, you could be like app.kitty name edit field. You can just hit tab to do that. Font size equals 20 or whatever. And then you can run it. And it'll be like pumpkin, really loud. Okay. Now, um, notice that I'm, what are you calling it, suppressing this here? If you don't suppress this, it does the same thing you would expect it to do in MATLAB in general, which whenever you run it, um, it'll print whatever you're doing to the normal MATLAB screen that you have open over here. Um, but it does it really, really weird. So um, it's changing, it's basically saying, hey, we're talking bubbles and it has this property and you can't really tell what it's doing. So if you see a whole bunch of things like that, it's because you haven't suppressed this. Um, but you know, if you just wanted for funsies just to make sure it is working, you could say x equals three and run it. Doop -do -do, do -do 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 -do. And then over here in the MATLAB, it would say, oh look, x equals three. Um, and I think that's mostly a good enough to get started. Um, the only thing I think so you, okay, well, how about this? You can also get information. So if I want to know how many Hot Pockets, I'm just going to keep going. I, you thought I was done and I changed my mind. I'm going to go to app dot, what was the thing where, oh, how many Pockets edit field? How many Hot Pockets edit field dot value? Okay, so I think from here, Kitty, I don't need you doing that right now. Um, so I can run it and... If I've got, you know, 55 or a lot of Hot Pockets and I come over here and it's going to say X equals 555. Um, so like, let's just say that every time, um, okay, so, so here's what's interesting. It's just like a function. So as soon as I click this button, X gets assigned, but then it goes away. So if I wanted to, I don't know, do something with it, I couldn't. So um, I guess what I'm trying to say is like if I put in, hmm, what could I say that would make this make sense? Basically, if I wanted to use this in another, um, another function, I couldn't. So like if I put in, we'll just do it this way. It's just kind of silly, but because you would never do this in real life. But let's say I put in another button and whenever I push the button, I just wanted to see a callback of what, um, a message box of, um, sorry, a uh, num to string, or I can just do a message box with X in it. Um, it's not going to know what's going on because once this runs, once that little button pushy runs and I click this one, it's going to be like, I don't know what X is. So, but this is a super easy fix and that's why I decided just to kitty.
just to include this here so I could be like just kind of following the pattern where everything no kitty is named app if you go app.x now app.x is a part of the metaverse of you know whatever is going on with this um, thingy so if I go app.x now it should work so I go kupchonks puppy kisses oh goodness bubbles oh goodness it was more complicated than that um how did i do this i know i've done this in the past unrecognized property x do i have to add one functions properties <laughs> it's almost like it expected me to be dumb i'm gonna add a property i'm gonna call it x and it's kisses <laughs> Okay, now let's see if this works. Let's. Hi, kitty. I know. Thank you. Properties. Button. Flipper dillos. Oh. <laughs> string to them. Or them to string. I swear I know what I'm doing. Now, are you happy? Are you happy now? One more time. Yes, kitty loves me. I think after this, I'm going to be like, I'm amazing. I'm going to quit. There we go. <laughs> okay. I'm super happy now because I can go here and I can change things. And I can get a message box to pop up here. Now, see, what's funny, though, is if I go and I change this to, like, you know, that, and I hit the button, it's still going to say the other value because it didn't get assigned to X until I hit the puppy kisses button. And now if I do it, it'll work. So the whole thing is silly, but, but it's really cool. I forgot that you had to do that with properties. <laughs> so you have to create um, variables, but that's good, right? Because you could accidentally create, um, I could have accidentally created a variable called, you know, horse button, and then the thing would be confused. So this is probably why they do that is to prevent you from creating um, variables that overlap with the thingies they've got over here. But anyway, um, once you know that you like it, you can suppress that. But anyway, this is so cool and, and I hope you have fun with it. I hope to make some more videos about stuff that you can do with this and just to kind of play around with it. But this should be enough to keep you from getting scared to click on things. Okay. Now I haven't really played around with these too much, but there are some really cool little things down here that we can play with eventually. And I'll probably do that once I get a little bit better with them. But man, this is going to be so much fun because you can do stuff with them. Um, and I'll, uh, well, like I said, I'll put some videos on it to, to do that. But, um, but man, there's, there's just, there's like all kinds of stuff you can do with this. And, um, it, it's really the way you learn is just by playing with it and being like, I wonder what this does. And I'm going to just go here and oh, look at these things or, you know, whatever. So I'm going to call it a big kitty, little kitty. And I think that's just going to work. Look, big kitty, little kitty. What begins with kitty? Kitty, 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 kitty. Yeah, that's what begins with kitty. Look at that. All right, perfect. <laughs> so, okay, now I think I'm officially done. This was really, really great. I can't wait to make like 10,000 more videos with App Designer. It's going to be awesome.